Hello and welcome to Real Hi-Fi Help. In this video I will be reviewing the Verity Sarastro 2 speakers. And welcome back. So here they are. This is a picture of them. We've got the ribbon tweeter, we've got the 6 inch middle range and we've got the, I think it's the 11 inch uh, base <clears throat> port here. These are custom made double layer drivers you can't you can't buy these drivers as standard this is uh, verity's in-house uh, tweeter very expensive very exper uh, expensive filter inside and it just looks gorgeous just very classic gorgeous huge speaker really huge and um previously i've done an, uh, a review of the martin uh, bird one speakers the ones that you're looking at here and now what i've done is actually compare that speaker martin design bird one speaker is one of the best speakers ever i would say one of the top 10 speakers in the world and i would also say that this verity sarastro speaker is also in the top 10. As you can see, I've given it a, a pretty good score, the uh, the bird one, uh, speakers. And remember, 100 is the best possible sound. So when you're getting a treble that's almost 80, that's just ridiculous. That's, that's almost totally unheard of. And 70 and 65 here, you know, that, that's really, really good. Really, really good. So don't, don't uh, look too much into that. <clears throat> And we've got to uh, put in some 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 new things here with the uh, the Martin design birds. One of the negative sides of the of the birds were that they were just really extremely critical and and finicky, and you had to use a lot of time using specific gear on it. So it could be a bit difficult pairing it. So let's just see how the the new one stacks up. So base. Um, I would I would give that two points more to the Sarastro. It it is a bigger base unit. Yes, you don't have quite as many of them, but it's uh, I feel that it goes further down. It isn't uh, art as artificially um, restrained um, and tight. So I feel it goes a bit more down. It's a bit more natural. It's a bit more organic. Same with the treble. I feel that it's a bit more natural, a bit more organic. It's still at the same level, uh, crazy, crazy, crazy good. Really a lot of, of bandwidth. The same with the middle range. So treble, I would say it's about the same level. So good, very good. And I would say two points more on the middle range. That is just a tiny bit better than the, uh, the, uh, the Martin Design Bird ones. And dynamics about the same, about the same. It's a bit difficult to say, but it's about the same. So, <clears throat> I would also say detail-wise, it has a different sound signature, but it's still around the same level. And black levels, yeah, around the same. I mean, I would say B&W are some of the best ones ever on the market with the black level. And also the top peak consult uh, speakers. They, they have like around 85 B&W and... and, and peak consult but i would say generally i don't like uh, bnw because taking into consideration the signature and everything else when you put that into the same categories i would say that bnw doesn't come close so yeah it, it's just it's just one of those things that bnw are very good at naturality yeah i would say that um, this is more natural than the birds and and that that was the birds, they, they, they did lack a tiny bit there. It was a bit squared, it was a bit edgy, it was a bit uh, in your face, and I wouldn't say repulsive, but it it could get a bit out of hand. But uh, yeah, they, they did a good job with this Verity speaker. And soundstage, about the same, about the same. Clarity, yeah, the same, just two different types of presentations. Now, in regards to intensity and resolution, I would say that, yeah, they're about five points behind, so 75, not 80. 
it's just it doesn't have that attack that re resolution and intensity you know where you feel like it's, it's threatening you and it's like this is happening right here you know it just sounds more of a like a cool hi-fi thing that you're listening to through some speakers so yeah that that's why it isn't quite as high so yeah, I would, I would again say five points behind with with the bird ones in t in regards to attack and and grunt. This is a category that I just recently created because there aren't many speakers in the hi-fi world that have really good grunt and and bite. You know, so you have all the information in the uh, the treble, the mid range, the bass, but also having that that grunt, that that bite, that authenticity. You know, there are almost no speakers that, that that have that on the market and usually when they do have that then the then we're talking about speakers uh, costing a couple of million uh, <clears throat> a couple of million dollars so difficult very difficult to get that at these prices and integration I, I would say that yeah that that's one of the things that makes the Sarastro just a tiny bit better than the uh, the the Martin Design Bird uh, one speakers, power and control. Um, yeah, you, you just have more units on on the bird, and I think that it gives it just a bit more power and and control and and pressure. So that that's one of the advantages. So. Here we come into something very interesting, compatibility. The Sarastro is more compatible with more gear because it's also a more efficient speaker. If you look here, you can see that it's a 93 dB speaker. I think the Bird 1s only are around 88 dB. And that actually makes a huge difference because when you have the Sarastro, not only does it look better, you can also start using it with, you know, very um very small watt amplifiers you know tube amps you can even try to use some triode amps on it it won't be a perfect match but it's possible to run it on it and you would be able to run like an auto audio note amplifier on this uh, and actually have it sound very 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 good indeed and that's only 10 watts um that's also one of the the most powerful um, amplifiers out there low watt amplifiers but um, it's it's just a gorgeous speaker and I wish that you could see this speaker in in real life I think personally that Verity is one of the best brands out there I'm not so much into the newer speakers I mean I would say the Verity Sarastro and the Amadis I would say those are the two best speakers that Verity has has made, and then here you don't get the ribbon tweeter. But as soon as you go down to Parsifal Anniversary, it it's still a very good brand. You know that they, they do some very good stuff. But I just feel that a lot of the quality is is lost, and especially when you go down to Otello. I haven't seen this one. This is actually new for me. Like me. I haven't seen that one before but again the the fin uh not really and and i consider the fact that when you when you go up to these really huge speakers low and grain too i mean they do some things that are absolutely awesome like they go down to 15 hertz they have more efficiency and stuff like that but i just feel that the cabinets aren't really solid enough to to drive these um the, this base unit so it kind of has its own uh life and, and I, I don't feel it's quite as magical as the sarastro sarastro is the most magical one of the most magical speakers in the world it just has like a an insane depth in the uh in the treble area in the middle range and and the way that it just throws that bass against the the wall and then, then you hear that with a tiny bit of a lag that that's cool some people won't like that but yeah you, you can see it's it's 50 inches you know that's like uh if you had a driver a uh, golf club and, and you added like five inches to that you know so yeah it's it's just it, it's just an awesome speaker really and it, it's it's really expensive um 
So I don't know price wise if it's really a, a good purchase because this was this will cost you as, as much as a middle class car, whereas um, the um, the bird one is is uh, only about half that price. So something to take into consideration, you know. Um, Features, I would say, five points more for for rarity and pride of ownership. Yeah, it, it just it just looks a tiny bit more cool, the uh, the rarity sound. So let let's get into the conclusion here, and that's I've heard rarity Sarastro one, two, and the new two S, and they are works of art. These are just detail freaks. It's all about detail. It's all about layering. It's all about bandwidth, and it's still very um, extremely musical and also oh yeah what I didn't write in is um, energy there's so much energy generally in, into the Verity sound but especially with this one you have to know that there's silver cable inside of the Verity speaker and not just any silver cable it's um, what's it called Nordist Odin I think it's Nordist Odin 2 the new one and you you can just hear it on the energy. It's it's an it's it's extremely hi-fi, and fast and clear, and it's just all about you know the the fast pace, the energy, you know the separation and stuff like that. It it can for some people perhaps be too fast. So you just have to take that into consideration because when you have a small. Uh, inch middle 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 tone driver and you've got silver cables inside and it isn't the biggest cabinet for that middle range and you have a ribbon treater with it and <clears throat> you have to know that if you have a lot of space between that that speaker and the wall the back wall the side walls it will kind of go nuts on you, the speaker. You know, you, you, you need to contain it a bit, you know. Perhaps keep it, I don't know, two, three feet from the wall, the back wall, and two or three feet from the side walls. That, that will create a more organic and natural sound. And once you find some, some, some good pieces of equipment and pair it with this, like, for example, Negra, the Agostino Griffin, you know, top brands like that. Even Audio Note sounds pretty, pretty good on this. It it can really turn on you the the sound in a good way. It's so neutral, you know. You don't you don't get a lot of speakers on the market that has this ability. Just like I like I told you guys with with the Nagra equipment, that has this ability where you connect something to it, and it just tells you everything about that equipment that you connect to it. It's it's so exciting, you know. I find that exciting. I like tinkering with equipment, you know. And I've listened to this speaker, I would say at least fifty times at three different friends and at least three times at hi-fi shows. I've even listened to it uh, with Negra equipment, Spectral equipment, and other equipment. I can't remember. And especially when you put some some really high quality uh, gear onto this, it just gets even more brilliant. And 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 you sometimes you think, hmm, have I have I reached the limits of what this speaker can do? And then you just put some new and better gear on it, and just think like, wow, why didn't I ever get that? You know, so it it. It just really is a really impressive speaker, and I, and I get when I when I have this speaker when when I deal with it, you know, I I don't, unfortunately, I don't own a speaker like this, but I I've been to these friends here who have demonstrated it with so much different gear. I've heard it on Audio Pass Labs, um, YBA, all kinds of brands, um. And it all it, it always just tell, told you a, a different kind of story and, and it, it just glued you to your seat. You're kind of leaning forward and going like, okay, what will it do now? What will it do now? How will it surprise me, you know? And and it's it's the way that it's the air and the movement 
and the energy and, and the raw detail and the and the fact that if you just find the right position to to place yourself suddenly you'll find a, a sweet spot because of these ribbon tweeters ribbon tweeters are very sensitive to to this sweet spot but when you find that sweet spot it's like woof suddenly you tune into this this extra bandwidth you know where you just feel like wow th this is a deep treble you know this this goes deep this isn't just like surface surface detail it goes deep you know and, and that that's really cool and, and of course the bass you know 11 inch bass at the back double double membrane that thing really reacts you know and um that's basically what i have to say so let, let's try and go into the negative sides of, of the speaker even though i don't feel that it really has a lot of negative sides so but i have to make this an, an honest review because i'm not gonna i'm gonna, not gonna promote something and and, and say like it, it's just great fantastic no negative sides everything has a negative side so let me just get into that if you compare this to the best speakers in the world, okay, <clears throat> then we're talking about audio notes, uh, A&E models. The one that I have, SPE, HE, which is like the fifth best speaker in the world, in my opinion. And then we have like the, the, the bigger models, you know, the beefier models that cost a lot more. I mean, when, when you compare this speaker to that, you, you feel that, okay, it's like, hmm. Yeah, you, you're lacking that grunt, that bite, that attack, that middle range warmness. And that ability to kind of glue everything together where you still have the detail, but it, you've got that like organic warmness and, and kind of forgiving on, on the musical recording, but still reveals everything, you know, you don't really have that here. It is a bit of a it hits you pretty hard the detail on this speaker you know so <clears throat> just to tell you guys that it can be a bit of a handful um having this speaker especially when you have some some lower class cd player dac amplifier if you don't if you don't believe in cables and you put those basic cables on the speaker it will tell you that those cables are really bad trust me but that that's for you guys to find out um but but you know even taking all of that into consideration it's still one of the with the top 10 speakers in the world and um one thing i noticed because i also have a verity speaker not this big model but i have the the fidelio the old model it's like 12 years old now um and it has a similar sound not quite as good a similar sound but what i noticed in in general with with verity the problem i have is that if you want to listen to primitive music punk metal rock and, and you're like really into that kind of music you know and if you're not really going to be focusing on classical jazz you know all, all the informative civilized music you know then then this speaker probably isn't for you because this feels for me as if when you get a speaker like this that you have an education you do earn some money you do you you kind of like going out to concerts uh, perhaps classical concerts and you know, you, you're a bit of a, I don't know, wouldn't call you a, a snob if you're buying this speaker, but uh, you know, you, you, you're kind of one of those like more posh kind of people, you know, you want the best and eat at uh, probably some half expensive uh, restaurant, you know, Th this is like the speaker for you, you know, uh, I, I really feel that that's like the, the customer segment that Verity is going after, you know, that little bit sophisticated person or, or a guy that wants to pretend he's just sophisticated but i feel that with the, the with the middle class martin design speaker and and the um peak console speakers um i feel that they're better at at punk metal and and rock especially when you want that that like thumpy middle tone you know 
then it's just you know it, it's it's a clear choice to choose those instead of this while still having the detail so it's just to let you guys know about stuff like that but you know listening to this speaker and they'd like to do this at shows they like to connect it to to negra negra on on verity speakers especially this sarastro speaker here just sounds ridiculously good you know um it just kind of blows you away in, in all kinds of uh, aspects and it's only it's only because i i've got the audio note speaker that i feel that yeah it doesn't quite do this compared to my audio note speaker but still taking into consideration you know damn is it just really fresh and lively and and reactive and i kind of miss that you know i feel that there's a lot of speakers out there uh, pr probably a lot cheaper than this that are typically they've got this like half safe moldy type of, of sound and, and i'm really glad that they didn't do that with this speaker so yeah this other thing is that <clears throat> the, this speaker costs about the same similar price to the martin coltrane speaker the martin coltrane speaker is actually a better speaker than this you know it just has a better middle range you know it's better at punk metal rock it's just more solid in sound so that's like the only speaker where i think that you know price wise it just doesn't make sense having having this speaker then i would rather go for the martin coltrane but you know it it, it also looks different it has a slightly different um, signature um so yeah the Martin sound in general is more intense, more square, more, I would say less organic, more about the pure detail. So, um, yeah, it's just two different priorities. So, um, yeah. And th then there's also this other consideration, you know, like if you get a, if you get a, like a, a used bird one, you know, I can get that for like a tenth of what this um, Veritas Rasta 2 speaker costs new. And that's a bit scary, isn't it? I mean, okay, it was released about 15 years ago, fine. But still, you know, it kind of makes you think, why wouldn't you then buy a Martin Design Bird 1 speaker? Because it's very similar in sound, just, just slightly different priority here and there. I would buy the Martin Design Bird one speaker and then I would keep it for 10 years and then I would sell it used, you know. That's just what I would do, you know, money-wise. But, I mean, I, I, I get it, you know. It is it's it is really cool. And th there isn't much on the market. I mean, Wilson speakers, nah. Avalon speakers, nah. I mean, they, they do some good things, you know. There are also other speakers like Karma Audio speakers. They also do some really fantastic detail. But just... Mm, overall if you take all of the the different measurements that i made with with the, the treble the mid-range the bass all the other categories it just it just has that magic this speaker and the martin bird and the coltrane and together with um like, like the audio note speaker it just they're all different but still really 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 good at the top there so and and yeah again my own audio note speaker costs one fourth of what this speaker costs and it's still a better speaker but i mean i have to admit, admit that it's not nearly as pretty as this verity sarastro speaker so I, I am kind of envious of that you know it's also pretty cool having a relatively low uh dp efficiency around 93 a lot of interesting stuff happens around 93 uh, dB because it still feels like you have a, a low efficiency speaker, but still it's pretty still pretty efficient, you know? So you have like the best of both worlds. It feels as if you have like the huge bandwidth, but still it's very efficient. So you can still use some of the exclusive um, class A tube amplifiers that only are like, 10 to to 20 watts you know class a watts so it's just uh <coughs> sorry it's it's a very e exciting speaker you know it kind of 
exists between two worlds. So um, just fascinating. And and but again, you know, negative is that when you have a thing like this, you really feel that, you know, it deserves a piece of negra gear, spectral gear, audio note gear. You know, you just, you just feel like when you have this and you only connect something. I mean. I always say that YBA is a good value brand, yes. And also, especially when you take the the, the bigger models, yes, their Passion and their, and their Signature Series Transistor Amplifiers, that's what I'm talking about. Um, but it just feels like there's always something left in the Verity Sarastro speaker that you that you want to, like, you know, like suck out of it, you know, milk that, that last bit of good sound. So... In order to do that, you kind of need gear like Negro Spectral Audio Note. But but yeah, you you can use, you know, regular gear. You can use Pass Labs, Mark Levinson, Par, uh, what's it called? Pass Labs, Mark Levinson, Macintosh. But it just has a tendency of being a bit mm, gray, dead, boring. It can sound good. It, it can sound good, but it just doesn't quite feel like like you're harvesting all of the goodness out of, out of the Verity speakers. So it's something to think about. It's something to think about, but still it, it's still a, bill, a, a, a very, a very um, compatible speaker compared to the Martin speaker, you know? So it's just, I don't know. But um, people also just have to know that when you have two sets of single wire speaker cables on it, it just sounds like a much, much better speaker. And you never really hear this at shows, and no one really shows you uh, this in, in real life. But I've heard it at a friend's place, and it completely transforms the sound. So if you've ever listened to this speaker at shows, and you can see this thing at the top, this connector here, you know, you can connect this single wire thing at the top, just like a regular single wire connected to your amplifier. And even though you think, okay, it's 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 stacked up, it's full, it's connected on my amplifier, why, how can I then put an extra cable on? Well, within that, uh, within those terminals on your amplifier, on the inside, you can then pull an extra cable to this pair at the bottom. Suddenly, when you isolate this and this part, so you don't have to use this middle cable, you are not reusing the energy that is going through here to here and here. Does, does that make sense? So this is connected to the amplifier and this. So you skip this middle part. It makes a huge difference. Suddenly, this middle range will feel like it's eight inches big, like it has a lot more oomph, a lot more organic, and it just feels like the whole base area here just moves a tiny bit more uh, it gets a bit wider, a bit deeper, goes a bit lower down, but there's less distance between the bass, the middle range, and the treble. It almost like it melts together and almost, you know, it gets close to this audio note um, speaker sound, the, the top ones, where it just like melts the detail together. So you don't get this artificial separation, but it just, it just one, one detail altogether. You guys just have to hear it one day, if that's possible at all. But it, it it's a thing that I feel that you have to kind of know when you're dealing with a speaker like this, because it's such a high quality speaker, and it's such a pity just just listening to it with with the connectors on and just like a normal shitty Pass Labs um, uh, on it, and then an old um, uh, XP. I don't know. 10 or 20 preamp on that uh, pass labs and then some basic cables you know you just feel like oh this is gray this is bright this is un uninteresting there must be something wrong with the speaker no 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 there there is there are extra layers to to collect you know to 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 get up to so i'm telling you guys that world exists you can dig into it but that's how you do it and for some people that are used to, I don't know, JBL, Klipsch, B&W, these, these like darker sounding, more safe sounding um, speakers. It's just, you know, 
you're probably not going to like this speaker because it probably might be a bit too bright, a bit too lively, a bit too analytical. So I get that, you know, it's you're getting over to a bit of a religious type of, of sound here where you're just into some extreme detail. And I and I get that some people don't 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 like that. I, I, I still like that a lot and i know that a lot of men around the 20 to 40 year age that are just crazy about the sound you know it's just just like a drug for them but i i, I do get it if you're for example an, an an older gentleman and you want to listen to a lot of classical music and you don't have some really good recordings and you don't have a good source uh drive like, like a cd or a dac or a streamer it's it's like really low quality then you might not want to go for this and perhaps take a like, like an easier safer choice than this speaker but yeah you guys also need to know that you 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 kind of have to lock it into a certain size room but and and this isn't just with this speaker but this is just like speakers in general what i've noticed is that 20 to 45 square meter rooms that's like the the sweet spot where you want most speakers to to be in that room so it it's kind of a normal speaker situation thing where you don't want to exceed 45 square meters you don't want to really share the room with the speaker with another room because you want like the back wall relatively close the side walls relatively close and you want like i don't know five six seven meters from the back of your sound system to the back where you're sitting. That's like the ideal space that you want to, to make this really shine as much as possible. So just take that, in, take that into consideration. You know, you don't want 10, 15 meters from behind the speakers, behind the speakers where the wall is, to the, to the wall behind you, you know, because when you have small drivers like the middle range here and you have all this air around it just has to it has to work too much and, and you can hear that you know it, it stresses you out so something to to kind of consider there and you can you can just hear insane details and it's a lot like the the, the bird one that i crazed about in, in the other review and it means that you probably will be tinkering a lot which some people don't like because it just gives you so much feedback and some people don't like that they, they probably want a more safe and solid sound that doesn't react quite as much and you know you just connect it and then it just works so it kind of depends who you are as a person i'm just telling you guys that this is like one of the few speakers that are just ultra detailed ultra reactive so yeah and it's really fast so it's kind of the opposite of, of a normal BMW middle class speaker that is like fat, sweet, forgiving, and, and a lot about the bass, you know. So something to take into consideration there. Um, I find it generally just more warm and organic and integrated than the than the Bird One speaker. So if you ever listen to the Martin Design Bird One speaker, just just know that the Verity Sarastro speaker is just like a tiny bit better but you, you just don't get that that intensity you know so um but th i still stand by what i said before when i made this uh, you know best speaker in the world uh video one of four in the description i said these are the 10 best speakers of all time uh for me what i consider okay you, you might have a different list i respect that no problem. But I, I've listened to most speakers and I've listened to them in different rooms with different equipment, uh, different combination cables and all of that. And this is like the, the list that I consider to be the best overall. Now these speakers here, these audio note speakers, they, if, if you would say that there's something that they do wrong is that they, they just don't look like the best speakers in the world they don't have that 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 gorgeous like look at me you know buy me kind of look you know I, I prefer looking at this in my room 
and and something like this you, you, you can get a cover for it here just so you know or having this in, for example in piano black one of my friends has this in piano black looks ridiculously good looks like a Steinway yeah. piano um, I prefer looking at that than looking at, a, at an audio note speaker you know um, so so those are like one of the few things that I not so crazy about with 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 audio notes so uh, you kind of have to go past that but yeah um also want to mention that in regards to audio note and all these categories you know you have to kind of like consider all of these numbers and then just add like 10 points on each point here and then you know how my speaker is and then when you get to the audio notes um, top models here, you know, the ones that are way more expensive than mine, you know, the, these ones here, especially the the SEC Signature and the Sogon and the Sotoyo, you're just getting into like ridiculous territory. And and, and, and yeah, then, then, then we're talking about, then we're talking about like, okay, 98 95 95 95 something like that in all of these categories eh? but you know price wise it's also a lot more than than the speaker so we can't really compare it um it's just to give you guys a, an idea of, of, of how everything looks the perspective of everything one <clears throat> thing that i will be reviewing later is the peak console or uh, dragon legend i mean it's one of the best speakers in the world. That's also why I put it there. Obviously, it beats the, the Verity and the Bird and, and the, this one and this one and all that. But, you know, I don't know price-wise what, what it is in the U.S., but I would guess that we're then up in a price that's like five or six times more than this Verity Sarastro speaker. And this Verity Sarastro speaker is probably gonna cost you as much as a i don't know middle class kia opel something like that hyundai car so you know this is basically like buying a house this thing here also this is like i don't know a summer house and what what's this like this is also like a house and uh I would say this is a bit less than a house. Um, <laughs> it's funny to, to be saying this. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to, to tell you guys that, you know, these are like, if you want the best in the world, go go and look at those speakers. Okay, And I'm not invalidating, you know, the speakers that you guys ha have listened to. There are some good elements of Avalon speakers, top Avalon speakers, and B&W speakers and even like normal stuff like Martin Logan and stuff like that. But, you know, when we're taking all categories into consideration, playing all kinds of music and, you know, pairing it with a lot of other gear on the market, it just, I feel that these things stand out and they're like in their own world, especially from around here. So, yeah, these are kind of like, this is a fantastic good value, you know. You probably won't see this used ever. And if you ever see it used, just get it, get it, get it. And and, and again, this one, you know, it. the new price of this one is less than, I think, the cheapest cars that you can buy. Uh, you know, those small Citigo, Skoda Citigo cars or... Volkswagen up cars or something like that. It's cheaper than that. So I find that, you know, overall, you know, if you're going for value and most compatible sound, having to listen to a broad set of music genres, and you have a, a tube amplifier, a pretty decent one, you know, it's just an obvious choice choosing this one. But if you're like, nah, I'm never going to use tube, and you have a pretty good uh transistor amp or maybe even a a a, a, a pretty good uh, tube amp you know just just go for this you know it's, it's so obvious but 
now having having reviewed this, I'm telling you guys that the more expensive Verity Sarastro 2 is more compatible. You know, you can use it with almost all gear out there, you know, even though you have to have a pretty high standard of gear, you know. You can't really do that with the bird one. But it's it's worth taking into consideration. It really does a lot of, of good in the sound. So a lot of stuff to to really take in, you know. I think this has been a, a very long review, longer than I wanted it to be, but I felt that you guys uh, needed to know that because th this is a, a truly magnificent speaker. And um, yeah, just try and, and listen to that one day, you know. You don't have to commit yourself to buying it. Just just go to a friend or a shop or a hi-fi show give this a try you know and maybe you might also listen to some negra equipment or some spectral or some Agostino or something like that it sounds really really good with this so um yeah that that's that's basically it that was this review and um yeah just click like if you if you guys like the video and uh, have a nice day bye